And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay, and of course, our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today, we're talking about Chernobylite. This is a game that is currently, finally, fully released on PC, and it's coming to consoles later this year. It's a game from a smaller studio and a publisher. Actually, the people behind the game get even. It's a game I played, and I didn't really like, but I, I really liked some of the ideas and ambition behind it. So, so their next game here, this Chernobylite, was initially via a Kickstarter, and now it's here in its full glory, and it's currently taking the Steam charts by storm. It's a very interesting game, and one that we're still kind of scratching the surface of, but it is very up my personal alley, very much my type of game, uh, my type of preference, I think. But we wanted to give you guys some quick info on what it is and really what to expect if you dive in. Because at first, you might think it's just another survival game, or even another bootleg stalker style FPS, but it's a really nice hybrid survival horror RPG with some non-linear stuff and an emphasis on story just as much as mechanics. So in this game, it's years after the Chernobyl nuclear reactor disaster we all know. Uh, you play as a scientist named Igor who is searching for his missing wife. This leads to heading back to the Chernobyl disaster zone and surrounding regions to continue your research, find clues, and figure out what happened to your wife. Uh, this is a Chernobyl that is more fictional, obviously. It's, it's riddled with bandits, mercenaries, traitors, and uh, of course, monsters because Chernobylite very quickly goes like buck wild dude and into crazy sci-fi territory. Igor is actually experimenting with wormholes thanks to a mysterious substance that was created out of the aftermath of the disaster. So there's that. Plus, not only are you dealing with military war criminals and spooky monsters, you're also dealing with interdimensionality and your sanity. Uh, some of the dream and hallucination sequences in this game are downright stunning and the presentation as a whole is really nicely done. Structurally, there's a decent amount to the game, but it introduces you to all of it fairly well. Uh, you and a partner take up residence in a abandoned warehouse overlooking the exclusion zone, and you plot and plan and set out on missions in small open maps. Like the maps themselves aren't really always huge, but there's always an objective and then stuff to find. And it's nice to just click and load into a mission area instead of just another open world game. It, it's kind of refreshing how old school some of this is. Now out in the field, you're dodging radiation and you're sneaking around enemies uh, that are either creature or human. And the stealth is pretty straightforward and simple, but it works and getting into a firefight feels decent. I also played with a mouse and keyboard, so keep that in mind, but uh, there's a melee and a simple ADS and the ability to hide in foliage. Stealth kills are there, and with more skill upgrades, they get more efficient, along with just other stuff like your accuracy for your weapons and a couple of other things that you can spend on skill points back at your base. I think there could be a bit more to it all here, and some of the monster enemy types are underwhelming, but it does get a bit more interesting the further you get in, especially with the weapon upgrades. Now, you're always juggling radiation, health, and sanity, and believe it or not, killing dudes in cold blood affects your sanity, because you're just a regular guy learning this stuff. It's a smart little theme that is kind of strewn about in the narrative and the dialogue and the mechanics. Uh, although Igor like is still kind of a straight badass though, like his voice actor is really cool. Uh, the game defaults to Russian language with English subtitles, so I kept it that way for, you know, like authenticity. But having the option to choose to avoid killing anyone or just avoid combat at all all times if possible because it affects so many other things should tell you kind of what you're getting into here and uh, speaking of voice actors you know there is a fair amount of dialogue here the, the game opts for faces hidden behind mostly gas masks and dialogue boxes with character portraits that are fully voice acted it, it works well and there's some interesting stuff some characters seem to at least sort of stand out and there are lots of choices to be made choices are pretty strenuous and seem to have an effect on lots of things in the game uh, like many character interactions come down to making a big decision that will screw at least one thing up and you need to basically just choose the lesser of the two evils. Uh, along with that, since you do go back to base and sleep, the game is structured in days and you can choose to do one big thing per day. And as days progress, 
enemies ramp up, uh, some timed side missions go away, weather changes affecting visibility, radiation grows, and more that is connected to the story and stuff. So it gets pretty heavy and a little oppressive quickly because you're also managing resources at base. Most importantly, everyone's food rations. Because as your adventure continues, you build up your base more and more and you get more crew members providing various specializations to the group. Uh, when you plot out your missions for the day, you can also also send your guys out on other missions too. Think of like uh, the older Assassin's Creed game with the Brotherhood missions. I know that's like the dumbest example, but it's the one my brain always jumps to. But it's a little more in depth, obviously. Uh, you can give them certain equipment to increase their odds of success and hope they come back with more ammo or food or crafting supplies. And if you don't distribute enough rations daily, their sanity and health can deplete and they can be less effective, among other things. Uh, to make everybody healthier and happier as well, you need to build out your base uh, through sending them out and through you scavenging for items and supplies on your own out in the environments, you pick up a lot of crap that can all be used in this build mode at the base that kind of feels similar, uh, just the way it controls to Fallout 4 and Fallout 76's building, even like layout wise, uh, but with less structural and more item and object based. You need power and generators to keep the lights on for morale and to be able to use things. You need air purifier systems to keep people healthy. You need enough beds and decent ones. Uh, you need some comfort stuff stuff, and of course, all types of things to help you craft back at your base, like labs for crafting first aid kits, workstations for crafting ammo or guns, and a workbench for crafting weapon mods. The weapons all have stats, and then uh, the weapon mod system changes it up, and it seems like it's pretty satisfying. It's not super complicated, but there's a good amount of options and stuff to kind of work towards, uh, you know, doing anything from stocks for stability to sights to different triggers to larger magazines. All of this, all, all of it, totally all of it, is pulling from a very limited pool of resources. You're only making things from a very small handful of collectible items. And that might be weird, but it helps with the survival horror tension. It feels like you always have enough to craft one desperate thing, or you only have enough ammo for a few firefights, or you only have enough stuff to make one bed. And it, all of it really is of seemingly good flow. It's a good blend of those resource survival horror type decisions and more RPG decisions like who to trust, who to say no to, who to help, who to trade with, because it all pretty much oppresses you in some shape or form. But the game itself gives you enough freedom to make it not always feel totally crushing, like especially with your encounters in the world. It's nice to frequently have the stealth option, just as it is having plenty of things to potentially spend resources on, you know what I mean? Uh, and the fact that it's team and mission management just as much as it is resources makes it all the more super cool. Then, of course, the fact that it's Chernobyl and there's spooky stuff. Uh, visually, the game isn't always perfect. Sometimes the lighting looked a little weird for me in the darker areas, but uh, the DLSS going on, the time of day effects, the atmospheric effects, and the foliage all makes this game look pretty damn immersive. Uh, apparently, the developers use real world photo scans for a lot of this stuff, and either way, the environments can look really damn amazing at times. I've seen some repeated buildings and some copy and pasted stuff here and there and some interiors, but the realistic look of the woods, uh, Chernobyl itself, the dark bunkers with your little flashlight, all that still just helps let you get really immersed in this wild and crazy world, especially when you start hallucinating and you see people or things or have little freak out moments. It's pretty effective. And considering I know they probably didn't have like a, an absolutely ginormous budget, if you can overlook little shortcomings here and there, honestly, like they did a really good job. Overall, Chernobylite is very cool if you're into this sort of thing. Again, it's first impressions here, but the systems seem solid and the story at least makes you want to keep going to see what the deal is and just like, you know, put all the clues together. The game actually does a good job of keeping track of all this stuff. You have boards in your bases to find this stuff. And that leads to my point. There's a couple of other things I don't even have time to cover that you could do in your base. But overall, it's not a casual experience by any means. It's like a real sit down and concentrate type of thing. But it's cool. It's sometimes scary. It's often stressful. And if you like the irradiated Russian wasteland style of game, which 
is basically kind of a subgenre now and something I very much enjoy. This is a really interesting one. But of course, that's a before you buy. You know how this probably goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, how the game works, and some personal opinion. And now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. Have you played games similar to this, uh, be it in style or in uh, gameplay mechanic or loop wise? Did you jump into Chernobylite day one? Have you been in this community for a while? Maybe you backed it on Kickstarter back in the day. I I'd love to hear your thoughts, whether you're just looking at gameplay now for the first time, or if you're deep in the game, definitely just share what you're thinking because this is cool stuff to talk about. But if you enjoyed this video and maybe we helped uh, give you some info or steer you in a direction, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We would really appreciate that. And of course, if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out new videos every single day. But as always, thanks for being here. I'm Jake Baldino. Catch me on these Before You Buys and the Friday show for the news. And we'll see you guys next time.